I I am am recording. recording. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the 610th episode of the Pokemon Podcast. It's super effective. I'm your host, Steve. With me today is Hannah. I am here. I just got back biking for half an hour. It's thankfully not raining outside. I'm all good. (laughs) Just a little tired. (laughs) I traveled all day. I'm a little tired. Uh, (laughs) You're more tired. (laughs) Bobby is also here. I'm actually not tired because I'm uh, getting better sleep since I'm using Pokemon sleep now. Uh, (laughs) I don't think that's true. (laughs) I mean, it's kind of true. I'm at least tracking my sleep now. Maybe (laughs) maybe it's not. Okay that much better but it's being tracked <laughs> theoretically that improves things yeah according to some studies sure i have confirmation that i'm not doing well sleeping but you know at least now, <laughs> yeah. now i have confirmation <laughs> that's not the same thing as it, it improving <laughs> but... um i just got back from uh pax east and pokemon was there uh so we'll talk about that uh we also have the april update for pokemon go and we have an interview with somebody who used to work at pokemon that talks about shutting down fan made games which that came out like two weeks ago but we've been covering other stuff uh but before we get to any of that uh let's talk about pokemon sleep since if you're listening to this it will finally be the raiko event which is the first legendary finally <laughs> And um, and it's it's more importantly, it's been a full week since Bobby's been playing Pokemon Sleep. So <laughs> how how is your first week experience? You know, um, I'm not really sure what I'm doing in the game still. <laughs> the whole like I am sleeping, I'm waking up, I'm collecting Pokemon, uh, which is what I was promised when uh, this game was introduced so uh it's fulfilling that promise um but aside from that uh it's fun I, but again i haven't really like i haven't uh really delved into like all of the i haven't opened up any websites to see any calculators or anything i <laughs> um, haven't watched any of the youtube videos no i haven't haven't really like jumped in that deep uh but uh i am getting started with it so what you does know. your team look like Oh, what does my team look like? Um, you got that Berry Fine and Caterpie. I have a Berry Fine and Caterpie, but it's not level 10 yet. Uh, so, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I have a Caterpie. I have a Pikachu. Uh, I, I, have a, I have a Togepi. I have okay. a, I mean, I could open up the app and see. Um, I have Pikachu, Caterpie, Togepi. I know those three. <laughs> um, I just caught a, a real, real Ash catch Ketchum in the making. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh i have a charmander i have charmander uh and i have a manky so mm, not really manky sure lapis yeah so right well so the first week it made it made me it like it wouldn't let me choose my location or island or whatever yeah you'll have to unlock sleep styles to get more locations yeah so the more pokemon you find the more locations you can go to yeah so i haven't unlocked lapis yet uh yeah so i mean it's fun it's i haven't like i haven't bought anything yet shockingly <laughs> um, no no but, premium so i haven't yet i was going to i, w- I was going to start that like try because you get like a two-week trial right so yeah um, i think starting it during raiko is probably the same that's kind of what i was thinking so yeah. i was actually going to start it today and then see how that improves my I, I really need to like learn more about it though like i really have not like jumped into a whole bunch of stuff because um at steve i told you this the other, at, at the same time i also downloaded cafe remix and so i've been playing that as well um, that was we're talking that, about that's games that take right your there. money yeah i yeah yes absolutely i'm not spending any money on that it's like filled with just money 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 but uh so i haven't really uh gone deep into to pokemon sleep yet but uh, I'm getting there, and it's it's fun. It's 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 another 
app to open in the morning other than Pokemon Go. So there is that to it. Um, we didn't mention this last week. I, I did mention this in the Slack. I think this this is really well, we're we're going to do some more Ryko stuff for those that are still very confused on what's happening. We have more information now that it is Monday in not America. <laughs> so we we know how Ryko works. I think to the fullest at this point. I think the only thing we don't know is if it's shiny locked or not. Um because we know that the first Ryko you catch will be the same as everyone else's Ryko. So the skills and everything will be the same. We just don't know if they locked the skills and locked the shiny. But again, there hasn't been a shiny lock in the game yet. So, but it could be just like the first one is locked and then every one after that is unlocked. But I don't know. Again, we'll probably find out by the time this podcast podcast goes up, we'll probably find out because I'm sure a bunch of whales will have bought the incense and then use the incense to use the master ball. And then one of them would probably see a shiny, I would assume. So I think like Pokemon go, we'll, we'll find out very quickly if something oh. is locked or not. Speaking of master ball, master ball biscuit or whatever they're called. Um, you last week said that like, I would have to kind of buy a master ball biscuit or whatever for the uh, tutorial, uh -huh. uh, but it made me use it. I couldn't there, get around I, using it. I feel like before a certain update, there was a way to like quit. Yeah, I could have using it. I could have tried to close the app, I guess, and just seen if like the tutorial just kind of skipped past it. But I had to use it, so <laughs> I'm pretty sure I used it on a Caterpie. I was wondering if <laughs> that, it was the Caterpie. <laughs> uh, that so, was the very finding s. It was the very finding s Caterpie. Yes, it was perfect. That so was that's there. worth the master ball. Um. um yeah. So this is what we didn't say last week. This was on we covered two different Pokemon Sleep dot I think it's Pokemon Sleep dot net. Whatever. Yeah. The the official Pokemon Sleep website. They had two articles about Raiko. They actually had a third one, which was uh, like three weeks ago. But anyways, the most important part about that third one, it says we are preparing functions that rewards and rewards that allow Pokemon Sleep beginners to research Raiko sleeping styles and befriend it. So I think I think this is the thing I want to stress and why I why it's really funny that Bobby just started playing, because I think it's very possible and very easy for Bobby and anyone else who is like just started playing or free to play to get this Raikou. I think that you don't need a Master Ball. And I would actually maybe argue that using your Master Ball on Raikou is probably a waste unless you really want multiple Raikous for different skills. But we now know that Raiko, the Raiko, the Raiko biscuit gives six. We know that last week. And Raiko needs 30 points to capture, which is higher than any other Pokemon. I think Tyranitar and Dragonite is like 24 or 25 or something. They're like the, they were the highest up to this point. Um, But if we also know the store, but ideally, if we just do basic math, 30 divided by six is five. So you have to see you have to have five Raiko biscuits to get him. And as far as I know, no Pokemon gets hungry after one. So if you give him one biscuit, he's not going to. So let's say he he always gets hungry after two, which is my experience with Dedenne, which is incredibly frustrating. You would only have to see Raiko three times and have five biscuits to get him. And they've made it really possible to see Raiko. Five times minimum with the 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 store um what? so we we know we know the, we know the store stuff now the event the event store they are calling it the event exchange the thing that hasn't showed up for any of us yet oh where you can exchange the main for the biscuits or the incense where and... you can exchange the special currency that is being used only in this event for the items that are being used to catch Raikou. right okay yeah yeah, so when you sleep, you will be getting Raikou main. And also, if you have friends on your friends list, instead of getting candy this week, it's possible to get Raikou main. Um, and you can only get Raikou main one sleep session a day, so napping will not help. 
because it's your first sleep session of the day. Just keep that in mind. But in the store, you'll be able in the non-paid store in the exchange store that Hannah said. <laughs> very easy. Uh, the first two Ryko incenses are 80 mains. And then the next three after that are 160. So without any spending any money at all, um, you can get Ryko to show up five times guaranteed. And that's not and even if you had the worst luck of like he's he's hungry after he fills up after two and he's not hungry, so you don't get the boost, which if you got the boost, that's three that's what six times three, that's eighteen. Like you would just have to be prepared to have a biscuit or two biscuits per Ryko. And even so, like even if you didn't have the biscuits or you used two and he was still hungry, you could still use your premium biscuit. You could still use your daily biscuit. You could still use your great ball. Like mm. you, it's two Wait. weeks long. You should be really good to not use your master ball at all. I would say if you are going to use your master ball, I would probably use it as soon as possible. So then when he does appear again, if he's hungry or if you have biscuits, then you're you can get a second one even quicker. Didn't. OK, didn't the event? I could be completely wrong. I thought it said only one would show up during the event, though. I feel like it did. Didn't it say like after the event, it can yeah, show up one more per person did, and then it would show up in the future after the event. Yeah, but you can still force him to spawn with the incense. And he will he will spawn for sure after Master Rank 9. Well, not for sure. In order to get him to spawn in the future, mm -hmm. you have to be at least Master Rank 9. Oh, gotcha. But that doesn't apply to the incense. Right, not your So, like, incense. if you can get to Master Rank 9 in the week, in this week or next, oh, well, I guess in any future week, there's a chance that he will appear. Master Rank 9? How do you get to master rank nine? <laughs> you <laughs> get the, better. I think the highest I've gotten to is like 16 or 17. I guess I got to get good because I'm not there or anywhere near it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. And then it, also in the store, um, biscuits are the first two biscuits are 60 main. Then yeah, this is all assuming we are able to get enough of the Raikou main. I was going to say, how I, much are you getting a night? Or like when you do get it, what, what was the... Well, you're getting it from when your Pokemon wake up mm -hmm. in the morning after their sleep. And then you're also getting it based on elect Pokemon spawning in your camp. And then it looks like you're getting two-ish for your friends list. So I've, I'm thinking like if you have 50 friends and you're getting two... Her friend, because the one screenshot I saw, like their whole friends list, all of it had Raiko main. That's a hundred a night. Okay. Oh, assuming you have that's a full better friends than list. I was expecting. Well, I need more friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not. It doesn't say your friends are guaranteed to give you Raiko main, but sure. when you see a screenshot of seven friends and they're all Raiko main, like yeah. I'm at, like I can only see seven in the screenshot and they're all Raiko main. So assume assuming they had fifty friends, that's pretty good. That seven in a yeah. row got main. I don't know what the other 43 got. Yeah. So, again, I think, I, I think I'm just stressing. 30 to fill them. Six per main. Six times five is 30. You can give him two normally when he appears. <laughs> Should be plenty. Should be plenty. And again, the store lasts for two weeks. So it's not like you have to buy all of this stuff. This first week, and if you miss them, it's gone. Now, but I think if you are limited on points and you only have one master ball, I think I'm really stressing. I don't know if it's worth using your master ball because if they're going to introduce Lugia or Ho Oh or Entei or Suicune, we don't know if those Pokemon will also have a two week event. Maybe some of them will, but I can't imagine they're going to be like, here's a two week event for every single legendary. <laughs> They right. could. They absolutely could. Yeah. They, I guess they could if they make some money. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I also think it's smart that they um, 
they like position i think this has to be on purpose so they they did the like electric week and then there's a week of nothing in between which we just finished which i think was smart because when you go into the two weeks of Ryko, you actually get an opportunity to buy two master ball bis- biscuits you get the one for this month yeah. and then the 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 event res- the month resets and then you have a so if you already wasted your master ball biscuit this month wasted my dedenia no, is fantastic think- <laughs> <laughs> I have I gotten you... so many critical hits on my meals thanks to my Dedenne. And I have a Caterpie. So <laughs> that's true. If, if you either got a Caterpie or a Dedenne this month, you would technically be able to buy Master Ball in what, six days? Mm-hmm. But again, I, I don't like, I just feel like if you used your Master Ball these two weeks and then. Ryko just appears in six months in the future and you don't have a Master Ball. There's just like no way you're going to get it. Right? Because it's already, you already have to get to Master Rank 9. Mm-hmm. And it's what, like, such a, like, I just think of like trying to get Absol or Dedenne to appear. Which yeah, I, I had a Kangaskhan are... in, my, in my game for the second time this morning. I finally got it more than halfway. This game's been out nice. for what, seven months? Eight months? Yeah. I have yet to see a Charizard. Which I think is what Master Rank twelve he starts appearing. Um, I think I've seen a Venusaur before, uh, but yeah, I think I think if you're free to play, maybe I think you should be fine. They, it does seem very based off the screenshots and everything. It does seem very obtainable that everyone should be able to get a Raiko if they're just playing every day for free. <laughs> you could just buy main in the store, by the way. They are selling Ryko main for real money in the store. Yeah, they are. Yeah. The largest of the boxes is 3,000 diamonds, which is about $50. How much main are you getting for that? Wow. 250 You're right? You're getting 200 Raikou main oh, for that. Okay. But you're also getting a bunch of Raikou candy with it. Yeah, you can use your main to b- just get candy in the store. You can also get a main skill seed. I didn't know this for the for the first three, four weeks of the game. Main skill seeds are super good. Uh, so if 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 you caught your Raikou and you're debating on what to use your main on. I think main skill seed for sure. Yep, um, especially if you're a free to play player, you don't have very many opportunities to get the skill seeds. Yeah. Yeah, skip Thunderstone, skip Dream Clusters, skip the candy. Uh, well, get the can get the Raikou candy eventually, but like once you catch Raikou, probably a hundred percent prioritize that main skill seed because you only get one of them, and it's three hundred and fifty main. But again, you have two weeks. You also get main from doing missions. So getting Snorlax to basic two is going to get you fifteen. Ultra one twenty five. Ultra four forty. Give out fifteen biscuits forty. Use seven incense, 40. Stick to your bedtime. Bobby, that'll get you 40. That's the tough one for me. That yeah, that's one, the one I never get. That's the one I never get. <laughs> so, And I have the notifications on. So like, you know, like the other day, my wife was sitting next to me and my phone, you know, and it went off, like the thing went off and it was like, you know, Pikachu's ready for bed or you. And she was like, what is that? I was like, it's just trying to get me to go to sleep. It doesn't work <laughs> ever. But... It seems like a great event, though, and I like the. I I do like how it, they've made it free to play friendly, but they've also I feel like they've also made it whale friendly. They're like, here's how you can give us money, here's how you can get more than one Raiko. <laughs> if only <laughs> Niantic could learn from the free to play friendly. <laughs> Again, Pokemon Sleep is still in early game. They can and probably will get worse over time. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Speaking of what's gotten worse over time, I think PAX has gotten worse over time. Oh, (laughs) Oh, no. no. (laughs) Really? It looked like a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, um... Uh, full disclosure, I know I always say, like, s- s- this company paid for me, but I legally have to say it. Like, in the, like, in the U.S., you have to disclose when a company gives you something of monetary value, even if it's, like, $10. Uh, 
So full disclosure, PAX paid for my four day pass, two packs, which I think is like two hundred fifty dollars. I bought my own flight, bought my own hotel, that kind of stuff. So there's just your disclosure. Legally, I have to say that. Um, I've been to probably 10 PAXs between PAX East, PAX West, PAX South, which no longer exists. And I do think a part, same, same with Pokemon Go, I think a lot of the events, even though PAX is inside, does rely on like the weather of a city. And how like nice it is like spending what was my flight like $350 to get to Boston and it just pouring slash being incredibly cold and bitter all weekend does not invite you to want to explore that city in any means. <laughs> nope. Which being in a big, huge convention center didn't help, though. I'm assuming it was in one. Yeah, the 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 thing with. um. The thing that I love about Boston is the public transportation is so good. So when you take like Orange Line down to um, South Station and then you transfer to Silver Line, you're that's still like a 10 minute walk from the end of Silver Line to Pax, which is all outside. And like you could Uber, I guess, like I did Uber when it was pouring on the last day. I Uber. I went walk or- in the rain. Yeah, <laughs> I, I went like South Station. I went from Orange Line to South Station and then I Ubered from South Station to the convention. So I just didn't walk that last 10 minutes. And it was still like a $15 Uber to like literally get that far. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't imagine doing that every I'm th- Look, I know there are people that are like, I'm Ubering every day. I'm not taking public transit. But like that is such a, an appeal to Boston for me is like. The fact that you don't need a car. <laughs> And that you can get so <laughs> many places on public transit. Mm-hmm. It was just like a really cold weekend. The biggest vendors at PAX were Final Fantasy XIV. They're always there. And then Baldur's Gate 3 had a huge booth. They had that like one game of the year. So that makes sense. They were there. Um, the Diablo game that's not Diablo. I can't remember what it is. Path of Exile had a really big booth. And then... Nintendo slash Pokemon had technically like three booths, which was no. announced for the record. This is like not Pokemon. Does, is, is It's not a surprise Pokemon or Nintendo was there. Nintendo actually goes to quite a bit of PAXs. The PAX right before COVID. Nintendo had like the world's coolest Animal Crossing booth that you could visit. And it had the longest line for the merch. They had like a separate booth but it was just like animal crossing merch that was well that was right before the game came out yeah it was before mm-hmm. the game came out and the line for the merch was insanely long and <laughs> you would have to get there at 8 a.m stand in line for like four hours and hope they have the t-shirt in your size because they would run out every day and then restock sizes and stuff so this year they had the play lab which they've been doing at pretty much every pack they also did it at pokemon go seattle uh, Go Fest Seattle. They had the Play Lab there too. I don't. Did they have Play Lab in New York? Probably not because it was outside. Yeah, no. I'm pretty Seattle sure Seattle had like a convention hub hall that they put it in. Oh, that's cool. I didn't realize that. But what the Play Lab is is you wait in line to learn how to play the TCG. They give you like a 30 card deck, like a smaller deck. And it was funny because the guy was like, we de- we definitely like rig the deck. So like your opening hand is not terrible, but like everything after that is randomized, which is like really smart mm-hmm. for like teaching to be like, OK, I'm guaranteed at least one supporter, two item cards, energy, three Pokemon, that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, but you wait in line to get a pin and at PAX unplugged which is the board gaming one they were giving away a quaxley pin and then at seattle the one i went to they gave away a Fue coco and i think east last year which i missed was sprigatito uh and i was like okay they did all three starters maybe they're recycling nope they got more this time it was tasaguri the curly form which was really cool so <laughs> The cool thing about PAX pins is they just ripped off Disney. All it is is, is like Disney, like get a pin mm-hmm. and then trade or sell. Like I, there was a cyberpunk panel that ended and people were pouring out of the cyberpunk panel. If you went, you got a free pin, but people were waiting at the exit of the cyberpunk panel being like, 
anyone selling pins, selling pins, give you 20 bucks for your pin because they're like planning to to flip it because they're worth money. The Pokemon mm-hmm. ones are worth money too. Usually these pins are like 15 to $20 normally at like a booth. Like, oh, I'm going to go to like the Night in the Woods booth and get the Night in the Woods PAX pin. It's like 15 bucks. But the Pokemon ones are free. Always have been free. You can't buy them. You do have to sit through the entire demo of them teaching you how to play. Um, and it's a good experience. They give you like free stickers. They give you like a little book. When you're done, you get the pin. You get a free 30 card deck. Like they give you a lot of stuff just yeah. for waiting in line and playing the TCG. Well, you also learn the TCG, which I would say is is an experience in itself to people who don't know the TCG. <laughs> Oh, it's really smart. Like <laughs> the 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 miss here to any Nintendo or Pokemon rep listening to this podcast is there's no Pokemon Center at PAX, which mm. is mind blowing to me. That mm-hmm. yeah, especially when PAX has more show floor ever since COVID. Um, where it's like they could definitely look also Nintendo could just get any part of the show floor they want. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's not a problem. <laughs> but you the the play lab is pretty big to like sit down and play. And then you walk across to another booth area, which had photo opportunities with like a blow ups, Quaxley, Fueco, Fuecoco, Sprigatito. And then there's just like a what could be a merch store, but it's just like two people sitting there being like, okay, you played, here's your pen. What deck would you like for free? And it just feels like a big miss Mm -hmm. for a convention, a gaming convention with opportunity for people to spend money. I mean, like merch is just a big part of gaming conventions. And I say like, oh, well, maybe they've never done that before. They have at Gen Con. They the very first year they appeared at Gen Con, which was before COVID, I'm trying to remember, like 2018, I think, maybe 2017. They just had a Pokemon Center. It was no play lab. It was just a physical store. Whoa. And they were just selling things. And I don't know if they do that anymore. I know for sure play, play lab does go to Gen Con. But it it feels like a miss for them because there's so many like smaller booths like fan gamer or whatever that just sell pokemon merch yeah or... that's where you get pokemon merch at any convention all the small fan stuff well i was gonna say are they do does nintendo sell any merch at pax at all they they sold the animal crossing stuff four years five years ago whatever yeah right? yeah, 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 yeah yeah but since animal... they haven't nintendo's not selling anything since then when no well before animal crossing it was what mario odyssey and they were selling odyssey merch and then before odyssey was zelda tears of the king not tears breath of the wild (laughs) which what zelda game was that and they were selling breath of the wild stuff um maybe it's a pokemon decision a pokemon yeah i don't then i mean it seems like they're selling stuff when there's a lot of hype around a game and Pokemon is kind of ongoing hype, and they don't have don't have a new main series game coming out this year, as far as we know. There's a lot of cost that goes into getting the stuff there, and so maybe it's just not worth it. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like maybe. if they brought stuff, they would not have to bring anything back. I feel like they would definitely sell through it. Yeah, Unless I feel they like they just... would do a good job at selling regardless <laughs> but maybe I just not think what, maybe, like know. if you're getting if you're getting a free 30 card deck and a free pin it's almost a good opportunity to be like here we we, we have etbs like oh you enjoyed playing the tcg you now know how to play at a very basic level mm-hmm. look at this 50 dollar etb behind us that you can and, purchase on your way out brand new i mean specifically for this weekend it brand new set came out on friday so it's there is that i guess but yeah i just i just feel like that's like a slightly missed opportunity to be like oh pokemon has such a huge presence here because they they were one of the bigger booths not that they had a lot to compete with i <laughs> but <laughs> you could walk away with like a pikachu plush so the third booth because they had three was not near the play lab or the like redeem area it was on the other side of pax and it was a demo station with like six to eight nintendo switches set up in like you know what you walk into like gamestop and they have like the demo station or whatever target Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And you could pick between Legends Arceus, Scarlet and Violet, or Detective Pikachu. And they had ready to go demos for all three of those games. And you would think after two plus years of Legends being out, that was like the most played game I saw on all of those screens where people like, oh, I want to demo Legends. Mm hmm. So I think it just it makes me think like sometimes we feel like we're in our bubble of like, oh, everyone has played Legends at this point. But where else do you really have not like an opportunity to play that if you've never if you don't have a friend or if you didn't drop 60 bucks? It's also the most I would say it's I mean, it's the hyped game right now just because there's a Legends game coming. So. I could see people thinking, oh, there's a, the next game is a Legends game or the next game they announced is a Legends game. And now I can play a different Legends game. So I'll, you know, give that a try or or something like that, you know. So I, I could see that being popular just for that reason. It's also a great game. So there's that. <laughs> and then on the other side of the demo station that they had set up they had this hand-painted mural i don't know if you guys saw pictures of that on twitter it looked so good Mm -hmm. it was it was so cool in person they finished it on thursday morning before the con opened so i think if you were like media or you were the very first people that got in you could see them finishing it up i think they originally started it at new york comic con maybe um and it wasn't completely done and then they brought it here and then the the artist was finishing it um, I slept through that, by the way. <laughs> I didn't get in. I, I got in really late on Wednesday, and I was like, ah, I don't know if I can get there at 9 a.m. to see them finish it. Uh, but it was finished, and then they allowed people to draw Pokemon on the left or right side in chalk. And then every hour, they would like wipe down the chalk, and then more people would come in. And then on the other side of that was a photo opportunity with either Pikachu or Eevee. And obviously, they cycled every like 20 minutes. So dominant there, Pokemon and Nintendo, but like no way to give them money in any <laughs> capacity, which I just think is very weird. <laughs> I mean, you can you can pick up your phone and give them money at any point in time. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say anyone who walked away from that TCG experience and and enjoyed it is going to give Pokemon a lot of money in the coming days and months, probably. Yeah. The other thing about the Play Lab is they started doing VGC stuff. This is the first time ever. So I I was waiting in the the TCG or yeah, the TCG line cuz I was like uh, I was like I don't need to do VGC stuff. I just want the pin. You got a different like you got like stickers or something for v- doing VGC. You but I'm waiting in line. What was that? You didn't get a pin for doing the VGC? No, you got a different prize. Which I think you should uh, like they, they should give you the pin. Yeah. They should. Yeah. That's what everybody wants, right? I mean, that was you we just talked about the pin for like 10 minutes. So. Uh the sticker, yeah, the the pin is great. The the <laughs> stickers are like a vinyl like not permanent sticker, so if you put it on something, you could technically peel it off. Sure. They're Those like are a fancier popular sti- right now. Yeah, they're the fancier stickers of like Karaidon, Miraidon, Lechonk, all that stuff. Ooh, um, Lechonk. So I'm I'm just about to like get sat down to play and then the the Nintendo rep who was the one that sh- uh, sh- walked me through the Scarlet and Violet DLC demo was there. Nice. And she stopped me and she was like, did you do the VGC stuff? And I was like, no, I'm, 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 I want the pin. <laughs> <laughs> See? And and she said, well, this is the first time we're doing VGC stuff. I built all the demo teams. I would like you to do it. Because I want feedback on how these demo teams are. That's cool. And so I did the TCG stuff, and then she pulled me after that, and then she put me into the VGC thing, which I wasn't going to do originally. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had like three rental teams. One was like a Don Dozo team. One was a team with Ogre Pond. One was a another team. They were, and and the the thing I noticed because it was like double battles, and they were teaching people how to play VGC. And the thing I noticed was only one Pokemon on each team of six only had Protect. And I was like, wow, this is really weird. Like, I'm so used to, like, five out of six Pokemon having Protect. And the one that doesn't have Protect is, like, probably Assault Vested or something, right? (laughs) Or, like, Choice Banded. (laughs) And I gave her that feedback. I was like, I'm so used to, like, protecting and, like, setting up and then being able to, like, play around that. 
And I was like, I guess that's my feedback. Like, I thought these teams were really neat. Like, Ogre Pond is Ogre Pond. She's a queen. She's, like, super strong, really hard to, like... Like, why would you not pick the Ogre Pond team? Like, she's so good. <laughs> um, but then I was thinking, like... You know how, like, the TCG, like, walks you through it, whether you're playing TCG Live or PTCGO or whatever, and they, like, kind of, like fake the first couple turns because they need to, to like teach you how to play to be mm -hmm. like oh you drew an energy place it here like play the supporter right. there's like no way to fake that in vgc and even though i'm like oh i think these teams need more protect as i'm like in the shower after packs like thinking about this i'm like a person who's never played vgc or somebody who's just gone through the story they've probably like never hit protect like why would you yeah that's true and yep. so if you're if you're playing vgc for the first time and you're and the the people teaching you are like well you might want to hit protect here why would i want to hit protect because they might double into your pokemon but why would they do that it's like so complicated to be like why is this move here and why why would i use it but so i the... i that's the strategy though. Yeah, that's, that's like what you're supposed the, to be learning. That's how that's the learning, right? Because if you if you go into a demo and you play it a certain way and then you go into the real world of the VGC, it's going to be very different, right? Than what yeah. that demo is. Whereas they could make the demo set up to be more like what you're going to see when you're actually in there playing the vgc i don't play the vgc at all so but i'm just going off of the, what you just said in that you're like constantly seeing this or you're constantly seeing that so i mean i think that would make sense to set it up in a way like that since that's kind of what it is going into it in the real world yeah i think they should probably make an active attempt to make sure you are learning defensive moves make sure you are learning setup moves i am only just starting to get into some of this a little bit more right now but i'm definitely one of those people who will go through an entire playthrough and just attack 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 <laughs> never use protect never really use status moves never uh raise or lower any stats of mine or my opponents in my own playthrough um and that's really what they should be teaching people yeah this is like they're, again their first time doing it and some employees were like, yeah, they didn't have enough switches so that this is my switch. So ignore my like side teams here. Um, Wait, hold on. Nintendo. Yeah. Pokemon company. These juggernaut companies didn't have enough switches. Yeah. <laughs> it seemed like a very last minute addition to okay. the play lab. Okay. Because again, this is the first time they did it. And the right. first day on Thursday, they had one line to get into the play lab and then the second day and for the rest of the con they broke it into two lines vgc line and tcg line hmm. um which was smarter which was much better yeah you but, could probably get to the vgc a whole lot faster that way yeah but it was it was exciting that they were starting that because i think that's cool there's nothing in the game to like well there's a lot that's not in scarlet and violet there's nothing in the game <laughs> to like set up a certain scenario like the tcg like they they can stack the deck in the tcg they can be like i can guarantee your seven card hand and the first three cards you're about to draw like they can stack it in a way where because because i've played tcg for a long time and even if you're e even if you're like doing something like a 30 card deck very friendly small thing you could be like oh i drew an energy Okay, pass. Next turn. Oh, drew an energy. Okay, pass. Okay, next mm -hmm. turn. Because that happens. It's just like how it shuffles. But they can like at least set it up so that that doesn't happen. And there's like no setup in VGC to be like, okay, I want you to double attack the ogre pawn, uh, ogre pawn person. I want you to protect. And like they could tell you which Pokemon they could already have the team set up and already have the Pokemon chosen that are going to be sent out what on in the vgc was it people learning on both sides playing against yeah. each other okay. yes that's that what i was gonna it say harder. it wasn't against a computer it was actually no just no it was against you people. could 
if you if you were with a friend, well, it would depend, right? You could you could you could also bring your own team. They did say like, oh, if you have your switch and you want to use your team, you can bring it. So huh. you could wait in line, like me and Bobby could wait in line. We could use our own teams, and then at the end, we get the sticker pack. That's a lot less controlled. I was gonna say. Yeah, you could also just pl- okay. If you want the stickers? I was gonna say you could also just pull your switches out in line and play. Against <laughs> we could just also play a wall in line. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you didn't like, there's a lot of people that go to packs by themselves. Like, I feel like mm-hmm. that's not talked about a lot. I feel like the amount of people that I see in solo situations or not with any groups of friends is very high, and especially when you're waiting in line. Um, like I was in a group of four, and there were in front of us was groups of three and behind us was a group of three. And so like the PAX people would be like, all right, who's solo, who's solo. Okay. We're going to take this solo person, move it into a group. Like there's a lot of solo people at PAX. So mm-hmm. I could imagine like, Oh, maybe I want to get into the VGC and you're waiting in line. And they're like, okay, let's find two solo people. We're going to put you together. We're going to teach you how to do this. Um, by no means do I think like that scenario was prime time ready, but like they kind of have to start doing it to like figure out, how to do it well it took them really long with teach cg to be like you know what maybe we shouldn't be giving people 60 card decks maybe we should cut it down to 30 and have the 30 deck way more controlled um for so for people to have a good time Mm -hmm. yeah it seems like that they're they could be on the road to that with the vgc if this was really the first time that they did it and but it does seem like there should be some more control there if they're going into a demo and they're going to, like in the TCG, they're teaching you how to play the game. And in the VGC, like you said, the game itself doesn't really teach you how to play the VGC well, right? The story doesn't, as we were just saying, we're just attacking <laughs> the entire time until, you know, you get to the yeah. end. So someone needs to do that, if especially if it's a demo, because if they're going to demo and want you to, get into it you may enjoy it in the moment but it would be helpful if it's something that's geared toward and then you can go and use this in when you go play the vgc when you go home and it's not like they're gonna sit down and be like well i played it this way and then they're just gonna get completely crushed when it's like oh they're playing people who are actually playing it differently (laughs) than the demo went yeah i i also don't think the stickers were like a good enough prize well, if well, this is new and if it was last minute, I'm not too surprised by that. Yeah, but I do like yeah. that this is starting to exist as someone who would love to have more opportunities to learn uh, about VGC in situations like that. If they were giving the pin out for both the TCG and the VGC, I would have chosen the VGC and I would have learned, tried to learn more there. Mm-hmm. You know, they if they were giving the pin. the pin out for both, I would have probably just gotten to VGC because... I just the TCG is is longer. It's like it's like thirty plus minutes because mm-hmm. they they do have to like teach you and well, you have to like shuffle and draw ideally, and like a VGC they matches. should be teaching you in the VGC as right, well. Exactly. That's I mean, thing. I'm I'm, teaching I'm sure they are to some, I, but like I they didn't need to teach me. I knew what yeah. to do. <laughs> yeah, that's the tricky thing. You you already knew what to do. Oh. And I'm sure they probably are able to kind of alter how much they are interacting in the TCG, too, like how much they're teaching a person. Yeah, it's it's I think it's it's definitely in the VGC part, like the person I played against wasn't like super knowledgeable. So I was like, you can like and and the person was like, do you want help? And they were like, yes. And so it was it was like them talking, but it was also like me like hearing them talk. And I was yeah. like, I don't want an unfair advantage because like, oh, it sounds like, oh, you should swap this out. And I was like, OK, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear this. I'm just going to commit to the move I said I was going to before I heard like you should swap this out. But that's probably the same on the TCG side. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you have to think yeah. that most of these people going into this demo aren't people who play the VGC or play Pokemon eight to ten hours a day for their job you know so like you are kind of a a bit of an outlier there as someone playing the demo i think i also don't know if like 
because I, I I overheard like one person being like, yeah, they let me bring my own team, and I just creamed the other guy, I just destroyed him, and it was like, I don't See, know. That's what you don't oh, want, no. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what you do. So I don't know if they played against somebody they knew, or was it yeah. just a random person? Because like I don't think it's fair. Like I when I looked no. through all those teams and I looked through the the balance and stuff, like there's no way these teams can like they were good against each other. Like I saw yeah, right. like the the paper rock scissors thing that she built for these teams by no means do i think these teams were like bad in the sense of like bad they were just not competitive teams right they were just not built for what you see this this weekend and what was where where were they vancouver this weekend toronto vancouver Um, it it kind of sounds like they should maybe not let people use their own teams and maybe should not only have the pre-built teams, but should have a set, like a preset three Pokemon that are being, or four, you can tell I don't feed you, see, four <laughs> Pokemon that are being chosen to send, to send out. Kind of like they stack your hand for the first draw yeah on the tcg well, side because on the tcg side you can't bring your own 30 card deck right you're only playing you're right the 30 correct card deck yes you, you can <laughs> so you just let me open my binder real quick yeah <laughs> otherwise you could have you have these my ride on deck real quick <laughs> i have this special 30 card deck all pre-built yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm using boss's orders on turn one <laughs> <laughs> it was uh that was like the highlight of packs i think that it it did come across that Pokemon and Nintendo put effort into a convention that I I have felt slightly on the down f- slide since COVID. Like I've been to two packs after COVID, three packs after COVID, and seven plus before COVID, and obviously it's not the same. Okay. Uh, like so many vendors have pulled out and have not returned and and whatnot but uh it was okay um it's just i could i could see somebody being disappointed flying out there having terrible weather having to get ubers not as many vendors as years before to be like oh this was like really expensive was there as many people there as the years before or is it also like a smaller crowd um it felt a good crowd, but again, not nearly as 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 busy as pre COVID. Like I remember walking PAX East is uh the the convention center is is surrounded by like a walk around that you can walk all the way around and like look down onto it. Mm. Uh which is really cool. And those usually those hall the hallways all around it where they have like the panels and the bathrooms and the food. Usually it feels like before COVID that it was hard to walk through because there were so many people. Mm-hmm. And you would like turn the corner and that like whole hallway would be like pretty empty. And you'd be like, Oh yeah. It's not not nearly as crowded as it ever used to be. Got not it. what it used to be. Which you could argue is maybe slightly better that you're not <laughs> yeah. bumping shoulders with somebody every every five steps. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. But <laughs> each their own. It sounds but, like there were still some fun things, but maybe not worth a cross country trip to it. Yeah, I mean I wanted to for my personal experience, I wanted to go like Thursday, Friday, and then like just spend like Saturday in Boston, like doing Boston things. And it's just hard to do it when it's pouring. Like we when I took the train back to to my friend Nick's house, the the conductor was like, "Oh, the, the tracks are flooded here. We're gonna have to go a little slow. Uh, we're like halfway underwater." <laughs> oh no! I've never been on the subway <laughs> going like five because the tracks were flooded. They had to like slowly go through the. It was just raining so much in Boston. Wow. And it was like we went we wanted we went went to like a really nice pizza place like Regina's, which I guess is like famous in Boston for having Boston pizza. And then it was like, okay, well, we want to go to like the famous pastry place, which is a five minute walk. So do we walk five minutes of the pouring rain or do we try try to get an Uber, which would be like 13 minutes and then like 15 bucks? Mm -hmm. It's like, I guess walk. (laughs) And then we got out of the pastry place and was like. 
the station's on another five minute walk and it's still pouring. Do we wait for an Uber? Like just walk again, I guess. <laughs> We're already As wet. Someone who grew up in the Pacific Northwest, five minutes walking in the rain sounds like nothing, but the rain over there is harder. So it was probably really coming down. Oh yeah, it was it was also, like, Boston's, like, apparently Boston doesn't have, like, storm drains anywhere, so you'd, like, get to a point, so and it would flooding. just be, like, huge. Well, <laughs> oh, they no. did say it was potential <laughs> flooding. Accurate. Oh. We'll blame Niantic on the weather, though. Yeah, always. It's always their fault. Always Niantic's fault for the bad weather. All right, let's take a break. Uh, we come back. We actually will talk about Pokemon Go. Um, I think April is exciting to some people, so... Uh, we will be right back and we are back from our break. My brain broke there for a second. Uh, <laughs> Scarlet and Violet news. Uh, we actually got news between the break. So that worked out well. Uh, there, there is some news before that. The, okay. So this event is going to be gone by the time this podcast goes up, but a new event is starting, but I do want to talk about this event real quick. Just to mention that this first time this has happened. Uh, so get ready to challenge Brute, Bonnet, and Iron Hands and Terra Raids. There's still a bunch of Paradox Pokemon they haven't done yet in Terra Raids. Like, I don't think we've had Slitherwing's Iron Moth. Maybe we have. I don't think so. We haven't had Valiant or Roaring Moon. I know that for sure. Um, thought, but. No. I thought we had. It's oh, do hard we have to keep sl- track at this point. No, I think we've had Slitherwings and Iron Moth, but definitely not Roaring Moon and Iron Valley. The one. They didn't do Iron that with. Valley, oh, yeah. right. I was saying they should have done that with Paradox Rift with the TCG. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, they should because it was those two featured. I don't think we've gotten Thorns either. No, Everyone always forgets Iron about Thorns. Thorns hasn't, right? Because I feel like I would. And no Sandy Shock. We have shocks. had Slitherwing and Iron Moth. Iron yeah. Moth. No uh, Sandy. Yeah, we've had Fluttermain and Iron Jugulus. Mm-hmm. We've had great we've had great tusk and iron treads. That was the one that broke it all. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the and two troublemakers. So other than Walking Wake and Iron Leaves. For the first time ever, they started dropping Herba Mystica with the seven star Blastoise Venus or Charizard raids. And a lot of people, including myself, thought they were going to go back to no Herba. But this is the first five-star event, not to be confused with normal five-star raids, because those can drop Herba whenever. (laughs) This is the first five-star promoted event that did drop Herba Mystica. It only dropped Sweet, and it was only a 3% chance. Um, But that is a good sign that they are going to continue Herba Mystica because it's been four events in a row now or four different raids in a row now with Herba Mystica. So sweet, not super great. I mean, all Herba Mystica is fine, but like salty is the easier one for shinies. And then spicy is better for like humongo and stuff, which is what I care about. But yeah, that, that event should be over. If you didn't get Brute Bonnet or Iron Hands and you're still playing, I don't know. I don't know. What are you Maybe doing? Maybe it'll come back someday. <laughs> um, but that event is getting replaced with a new event that just got announced while we were recording. Maybe we should start recording at night. <laughs> like the pattern. Uh, <laughs> the pattern. Uh, this is a new mass outbreak event will take place from Friday, March 29th to Sunday, March 31st. Uh, it will be Pichu and Happini in Paldea. Munchlax and Riolu in Kitakami and Elikid and Magby in Blueberry. Um, and they will have the normal shiny odds because if they did have increased, they would say increased, but they will be more likely to have the vigor mark, which is the mark that looks like the little like muscles, like rawr, like Vigoroth, <laughs> but muscles. <laughs> what? Er, <laughs> yeah, like I got, I got that like, part. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> Glad we got there together. We're there, I guess. Uh Toxel <laughs> didn't make the cut for baby Pokemon. I guess not Poor this Toxel. time. Poor Toxel. 
the vigor mark gives the title of the lively. So mm. you could get Riolu the lively. I think Riolu is probably the best one out of this. Everyone just got a free shiny Riolu like four months ago. Free shiny Lucario. How uh, how many of the baby Pokemon did you say? You said two in each region? Yeah. So there's a bunch of baby Pokemon. <laughs> they did skip some. Like Bonsly is in the game. Yeah. And Mime Jr. Mm. is not in the game. My, no, no Mime Jr. No, no Mime Jr. That's right. But yeah, uh, the Toxel is in the game. Oh. Toxel would have been more exciting than all of these. Let's be let's be real here. Meh. What? Meh. <laughs> There's like plenty Toxel. of Toxel out and around Paldea. It's it's there a lot. These are more exciting than that. I don't know. I don't like the Pokemon with the diaper. I don't like Toxel very much. <laughs> <laughs> this is the breaking news of the podcast. Hannah doesn't <laughs> like Toxel. <laughs> wow. Okay. I mean, Toxel. Toxel's fine. <laughs> I think they chose good Pokemon. I think that a lot of people probably have the shinies for these because almost all of them have been Community Day Pokemon. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. still. I Actually, think all of them have been gonna Community be... Or not Rylo. Not all of them. Yeah, not Riolu. Or Munchlax, uh, you're right. Yeah. yeah, and Munchlax, yeah. Kitakami is going to be the best choice there unless you have won the Ogre Austin and already have a shiny Munchlax. Yeah. But I had just been thinking, I was uh, hoping they would do more of these Mass Outbreaks events. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad to see it happening again. Same. I'm a much bigger fan of the Mass Outbreak events than the than the raids honestly just for for how i play the game i, I really enjoy the mass outbreaks so good to see yeah, more like of them, them popping up i like when they have an increased mark um and everyone should have a bunch of Herba mystico since we had three straight weeks <laughs> promoted Herba mystico raids. some of them were harder than others yeah i will say um if you still care about the item printer uh, you're probably going to see a bunch of YouTubers say, Chansey and Happini, they're wrong. Please note that. Uh, so Chance, the Happini does give 68% dust, but Magby also gives 68% dust. Uh, so it's the same. And uh, Elekid gives 45%. So if you're on Blueberry Academy and you're just switching between like two of them, or you're just like knocking out for the dust or whatever. Uh, blueberry, those the, that combination of those two are probably what you want to clear out. Well, how I've always done it is like, because in my head, I'm like, I'm not going to hunt Elekid or Magby. I have those Community Day. They're Gen 1. They're not super exciting. But I will still go there, and I will still just clear that all out for the, the dust. Mm-hmm. And then I will like probably switch over to like do probably Riolu, Riolu. Um, but you don't if if you're sick of getting shiny chances or shiny happinies, do, do the Magby. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same as it's the same as Blissey. Um, so that's exciting. Uh, I think Hannah mentioned before we started that Easter is coming up. So this is probably in in response to like baby Pokemon Easter, that kind of stuff. Makes sense. It makes makes perfect sense. Uh, what? So we'll have. I mean, April first is the day after that. Is that still Badoof Day? Is that that is that a Pokemon Company thing or is that? I. I think it's know. a Pokemon Company thing. There's it been is, a right? video on that's, YouTube. That's why they did the special it. delivery. Badoof last April or the April before that for the TCG? I think it's a Pokemon company thing. I don't remember I don't... what they did last year. They did. Well, well, I feel like Pokemon Go had the event. year before. 2022 was when the Badoof video came out, but that wasn't actually an April 1st thing. I think they, it came out a little bit before April 1st. Oh, Badoof Day is July 1st. Oh, my bad. But in Pokemon like it... Go, yeah. No, that makes sense because I remember streaming the Badoof 
event and getting a shiny Bidoof. And if it was in April, that would probably been like too cold. Yeah, it was definitely it was July 1st. Why do I I felt like for some reason, April Fool's Day had a Bidoof something to it. Because the Bidoof event was really interesting. Pokemon Go has done a number of April Fool's Day events. I think it's changed up now and then. Yeah. Okay. Usually it's Ditto. There was a Ditto event last year. All of our sentences are ending with question marks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. It's been so long. It's been like there's been like they didn't do a Pokemon Go event. Obviously, the first year I don't think. And no. then what was it? The second year they did the Pixel thing, which was pretty cool. Yeah, I miss that. And then they did a Murkrow thing in Pokemon Go, <laughs> where then like half the internet couldn't figure out if people were trolling or not. If Murkrow was shiny or not. <laughs> so I guess success there. Yeah, it looks um, like since then they've done Ditto. And the Pidgey. Was the Pidgey last year? Y Ditto was in 2022. Okay. So there was a Ditto event for April Fool's in 2022. Uh, Pidgey Pandemonium? Yes, was Pidgey Pandemonium was 2023. 2023. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, double XL and double... X uh <laughs> S Pidgey were had an increased chance. Well, since we're talking about Pokemon Go, we'll get the Pokemon Go news out of the way here. There <laughs> they did post the April content update, which I feel like they posted earlier than normal. But it really sure. depends. Um they're saying that uh Tapu Bulu will have a featured attack of nature's madness uh, from April 4th through April 9th will be the sizable surprise event. April 7th will be community day classic, which I think we know that as Salamance. April 12th through the 17th will be bug out, which I don't think they've talked about yet. No, just... they have done similar events before though. Yeah. Yeah. That cause that had the, the the bug catching net you could have as yes. a pose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> April thirteenth will be Mega Heracross Raid Day, which should be exciting for a lot of people since that is a version new Mega. Yeah, <laughs> new Mega, <laughs> and you can only get Heracross in like small parts of Florida and Brazil <laughs> and True. Mexico. In Mexico, Not yeah, Brazil. yeah. Well, is it in Brazil? I think it's Brazil. I, I think it just oh, reaches okay. up that far. Definitely in Mexico, because I have multiple hair across from friends who had traveled to Mexico and then traded them to me. <laughs> April 20th will be Commute Day. Did they, did they say which Pokemon that was? No. Nope. They didn't. Okay. <laughs> uh, April 22nd is subs uh, Sustainability Week. Which I can't remember what they did for that last time. Wasn't it Trubbish one year or something? Yeah, a mm -hmm. lot of poison type Pokemon and yep. grass types, I think. There is a hatch day on April 28th, which, which baby Pokemon haven't they done yet? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, one thing that's kind of interesting is so, for instance, the spotlight hour of April 23rd is Trubbish. That's during Sustainability Week. Okay. The spotlight hour of April 30th is Clefairy, which is right after Hatch Day, two days after Hatch Day. Like the bug out, the week that the bug out event is, the spotlight hour is actually three Pokemon. It's Caterpie, Weedle, and Wurmple. Uh, so these are kind of going along with, obviously going along with like are the you, weeks. Are you thinking, they haven't done a Clefa Hatch Day? No, they That's haven't. That's what it sounded like. That. Would be if great the spotlight hour up. is the hint we we're going off of. Yeah, that would be. I'd be okay with that. Or the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tapu Lele will be April third in raid hours. Cartana and Celestela will be April tenth. Northern Hemisphere for Cartana. Southern Hemisphere for Celestela. And then Tapu Bulu will be the seventeenth and the twenty fourth. Um. Seems like a lot of events for April. Yeah, and Cartana and Celesteela can be shiny, which would be the first time for both of them, right? Yep. Yeah. Cool. 
um we did we did learn about the sizable we didn't talk about that last week right the sizable yeah do you have it in front of you surprises yeah so the sizable surprises event um that's yeah april 4th through april 9th um it looks like it's going to be uh two times catch xp with nice throws or better uh there'll be an increased chance of encountering extra extra small and extra extra large pokemon uh an increased chance to encounter shiny whalmer uh and then there'll be some wild encounters just some special wild encounters like <laughs> special wild encounters like diglett um uh, <laughs> Mantine, so special. whalmer joltik um tynamo cutie fly wimpod and sea toddle um some trainers may even encounter onyx or snorlax um and then wimpod will be able to be shiny now uh starting with this event as well um one star raids will have fungus clink esper tadbulb three star raids will have alolan executor galarian wheezing gyarados and snorlax five star raids will have celesteela in the southern hemisphere and kartana in the northern hemisphere and then Mega raids will be Mega Charizard X, um, and there'll be some Charizard makes sense because well. both these five stars are weak to fire. Makes sense. Yep. There you go. Um, and then there'll be collection challenges and Pokestop showcases as well. So should be a good, should be a good event, um, especially with the increased chance. I think of the um, extra extra large Pokemon people, more people doing those showcases. I feel like since the Pikachu reward came out and increased chance of extra extra small pokemon theoretically someday we will be able to win a someday. showcase with yeah. the extra extra small pokemon <laughs> yeah i was actually with somebody this weekend they're like why am i keeping the extra extra small they're never in because showcases and i was like what one day they might be <laughs> yeah maybe no, definitely as somebody who transferred all of their extra extra large pokemon about I don't know. Six. It was right before showcases like came out. Uh, yeah, make sure to hold on to all of them because I was like, I'm collecting too many different things. I gotta get rid of some stuff. I'm gonna get rid of my Shadow Pokemon. I'm gonna get rid of my XXL Pokemon. And now I wish I had not done that. <laughs> yeah, you, you dropped the ball there. I really did. I really did. Uh, all right. Final. Let me wait. Hold on. Where's my show notes? Final thing. I think this is the final thing. Oh yeah. Okay. Final thing is uh, this is an article off aftermath.site, which probably pulled from somewhere else. No, I think this is the actual interview. Um, so this is uh, Don McGowan. Mc, McGowan. Mc, Mc, McGo, McGowan. I don't know how to say his last name. Wait, how is it? How is it spelled? M-C-G-O-W-A-N. Originally McGowan. from Montreal. McGowan is how McGowan? Ooh, that sounds better. Sure. I'll, we'll just that. call him Don. Uh, <laughs> Don worked for both Bungie and the Pokemon Company. Uh, and they ended up as the head lawyer for what was Microsoft Game Studio at a certain point. We don't have to bore you with all that other stuff. We gotta get to the good stuff here. Uh, well, at Bungie, they were the general council and that at pokemon company they were chief legal officer in business affairs and they say they at pokemon ran a team of 20 lawyers and non-lawyer paralegals at the head of office in bellevue as well as london and at bungie that was eight people uh globally throughout their team uh he also don also says at pokemon i oversaw customer service team mostly because i was in the department of Things that can go wrong. Spent a lot of the time on the road because at my time during Pokemon, the brand returned to international juggernaut status because of Pokemon Go. A lot of privacy regulators around the world wanted to talk to the company, so that means I would have to go to them. Uh, Don also did things like factory tours of manufacturing facilities, uh, making sure there was no child labor in there, etc. Take that, crumble cookie. Um... On <laughs> a whole different, it's a whole different conversation. <laughs> they were responsible for event security, uh, which had they he Don is saying uh, had more to worry about for the Pokemon World Championships. We would have players from around the world in one central location. In today's America, that means you have to plan for security incidents. Uh, this involved a lot of travel. 
Don was on the road for about 125 days a year and was also one of the producers on Detective Pikachu, uh, the, the movie, not the game. <laughs> <laughs> All of this stuff is like pretty boring. Uh, logically, <laughs> uh, they were a touch point for discussions with Legendary for casting script approvals under the Producer Guild of America. Those roles are considered producer. And they say, uh, I can't let go without saying Justice Smith and Catherine Newton are two of the nicest people in the inter- entertainment world. And I would love to work with them in a heartbeat. So, yeah, I wish I wish there was like more there with the movie, but it was just like. Touch point for script and some stuff, but I would imagine there would be more touch points as well. It's a pretty quick, small interview. I was honestly surprised when I clicked into it and started to scroll and saw that the scroll bar was so large. Um, there's They don't delve into depth too much, but I have seen Don talk about Pokemon stuff every now and then just on the interwebs, and there's some inter- interesting stuff that he's done. Yeah. It feels like his... His career path is more in- interesting than the work he did at Pokemon. <laughs> no, like the it- work he did at Pokemon sounded super interesting, too. He's the one who brokered the deal to make Pokemon Go a thing. Kind of mentions it here in a one-liner in the interview, but there's maybe it's just because I have interest in the legal side of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a lot of issues getting that set up there. Yeah, I would imagine uh, both... that would be huge, actually, with Pokemon Go and having to think about how that's going to work with an app, like tracking your location and things, and then having all the different regulations around the different countries that are going to have that game, and then being such a big part of that game. I all feel like of would that. Be huge and I think on there the was legal. one one story at one point where they had to work out uh, how Pokemon would or wouldn't spawn in the ocean. Or when people were out there on cruises and I believe the solution was that they worked out to put Pokemon on the largest cruise line routes and that's it making sure oh, that people wait, wouldn't wait, be jumping Pokemon off the boat cruise lines route? <laughs> <laughs> at least at one point <laughs> what? wow I didn't realize that. I did not realize that never been uh, on a cruise he's taking the wrong cruises <laughs> He said, at Pokemon, I was taking out unlicensed merchandise outlets at Bungie. I was taking down cheat vendors. Um, I I looked at it. I looked at it as helping fans get the most authentic experiences possible. Um, the interviewer says, before we wrap up, something I've always wondered, never got a chance to ask, is how does the Pokemon company handle cease and desist letters uh, with regards to fan projects? How do you find them? Where do you draw the line? What is allowed? Um, What does the company think needs to be shut down? He says, short answer. Thanks to you folks. I would be sitting in my office minding my own business when someone from the company would send me a link to a news article or I would stumble upon it myself. I teach entertainment law at the University of Washington. So I say this to most of my students. The worst thing on earth is when your fan project gets pressed because now I know about you. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but that's not the end of the question. Don goes on to say, you don't send a takedown right away. You wait to see if they get funded for a Kickstarter or something similar. If they get funded, that's when you engage because no one likes suing fans. And that's usually right. how it goes for most of that stuff we've covered. Usually it's like there's this fan made game getting made. And then the second they put it behind a paywall or mm-hmm. they put microtransactions in it. And I'm pretty sure the Metroid fan made game went for six or seven years just fine and then as soon as they were like maybe give us some money nintendo was like nope (laughs) yeah well that's where it's much more rock solid anyways when when money is involved versus just a a project where you're not actually monetarily benefiting from it or at least directly benefiting from it it's a little bit more it doesn't look as good on the big company coming in and taking it down. But then once the money aspect comes in, uh, it changes things legally. 
Well, they they could definitely take it down before money happens. It's just yeah. oh, for sure. But they it have doesn't, such an it, easier. <laughs> it's not as like it looked like he said. Like it, then it's you're just taking down some fans thing as as the big company. It's a little. It doesn't look as nice. The perception isn't as good publicly um, as when there's money involved. It's a little bit. It might not still look good publicly, but there is a little bit more. It's a little bit more like, oh, historically, that's how that's gone down. So I think people are a little bit more likely to not hate on the company as much when that happens versus if someone's not making any money and then the company comes in and just says, you're done. You know, it doesn't it doesn't look as good in the public eye. There was a. After actually a PAX event one year, this is probably like 10 years ago or or. We covered it on the podcast. I know that for sure. So, um, but there was like a bar in Seattle after PAX that had like a Pokemon event with like Pokemon themed drinks and and whatever, whatever you do at a bar. But they charged a cover fee, and it was normally not like a Pokemon bar it was like a it was like a gamer bar but they they went out to heavily advertise that this is like a pokemon themed night with a cover fee and the anime was going to be on the tv and we're going to have all these drinks and they got they got uh yelled at by mr pikachu for that and i don't think that bar stayed in business much longer just after that ask <laughs> interesting i do so i went to I'm not going to now, I'm not going to say the name of the event that I went to last year, but I went to an event uh, that did revolve around um, the TCG to some extent. And one of the things that they had at the event was you could buy a drink at the bar that was Pokemon themed. Um, and you also got a pack of cards <laughs> when you bought the drink as well. Um, and I, I do wonder how that would factor into things. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, because the person who, um, like the team that put that event together, I would think that they 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 would have worked with them. I mean, it's not like it was not like a secret thing. So I it, I'm just interested in how that. I wonder how that. Came yeah, to I wonder be. what or the yeah, licensing line is for that. I feel like with a game, it's more. Uh, what's yeah. the word? like more obvious? Yeah, maybe, and like the. You could obviously the booster packs were not provided by like the Pokemon Cup, right? It's just somebody can buy a booster box and then just give out packs of cards or whatever. Um, and the drink was like just the name of a Pokemon. So I, I don't know that there's like that much connection there. Like there would be with like a, a bar that's heavily advertising it being like a Pokemon themed thing, but I don't know. <laughs> the lines drawn there are tricky. Yeah, absolutely. I doesn't say in this interview when Don left. It's Pokemon. been a few years. Yeah, but At there's least. been other interview like like Hannah said. There's been other interviews with Don. He seems cool. He seems like a cool guy. Yes. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder why he left Pokemon. Probably just for something but bigger. It sounded like it was really stressful. Uh, he left in May of 2020. Hmm. Well, his <laughs> current LinkedIn profile, like finally, the main... finally, the hard hitting <laughs> news. We can report who's working where on LinkedIn. Well, this is what it says. Don McGowan, if that's how you pronounce his last name, figuring out what to do all day. I might be retired. I might be in my super villain era. Only time will tell is his. I feel like, what is that? like if you were a lawyer for Microsoft slash Pokemon, probably good. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. lawyers already make a pretty good amount especially ones that are working for microsoft and the pokemon company yeah <laughs> yeah yeah like absolutely. i imagine if you were like a lawyer for like apple or google or any of those tech giants you're, you're probably set yeah. or disney like disney lawyers are probably yeah. <laughs> yes all of those all the those people who are like the chief legal officer or the general counsel of those companies they've as mm -hmm. far as how much they're getting paid they're just fine 
what they do with their finances, I don't know. So I have no idea if they're fine in that way. But yeah, they're they're getting paid just fine from the company. All right. Well, I think that's our show. Thanks for making it to the end. I, I look, the it's it's a lawyer speak. I'm sorry if you thought there was going to be something more there. <laughs> If there's anything lawyers are very good at, it's talking in a way to be like, here's the shortest answer that you deserve to know. We're not giving you anything more. <laughs> there was about one line to do with the headline that most people used when running, when spreading that news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talking about shutting down fan projects, there was one sentence, maybe two. One, one sentence. <laughs> I, I, who was I with recently? that they were like oh man you got to go see creatures and like ask them questions and i was like oh because i did that in japan and i was like yeah that was like really cool and i was like it wasn't as cool as you thought not because the office is weren't cool or but the the worst part of that whole experience was sharing that time with media so there was like 10 content creators i think myself included and then there was like 25 media like ign comicbook.com spanish outlets brazilian outlets etc and the worst part was when it was question time like hearing their questions because mm -hmm. they would ask questions in a way of like i see what headline you want to write like <laughs> yeah. i totally understand like it might even be a basic question where like we all, we, everyone here knows the answer to this question. Why are you why are you asking it? But it, like, they want they want to write a specific headline, and they mm -hmm. want that answer. But like, oh, this is what they said in person in front of me in Japan on twenty twenty three, whatever the date was when we went. Mm -hmm. And that was like, if you, if I was to take that whole experience, because we were there for, I think we were there for like four hours, four or five hours. You could have easily cut like two and a half, three hours of like media questions and been like, mm -hmm. none of these are really that beneficial. And I'm sure they all wrote headline. I'm sure when that like I was so busy in Japan, I didn't like flip over to IG. I don't know why I'm picking on IGN. I didn't like flip <laughs> over to IGN to be like, ah, what, <laughs> what four questions did you ask? And like, how did you write these articles? I'm sure they did, but mm -hmm reading this headline of like Pokemon former chief lawyer on shutting down fan games. And like, it was literally like one, one question out of the 10 questions we skipped through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think what's the, what's great about like the situation you were in where they're asking these questions at the creature's office. Like they also have a scripted answer for every single question that will probably be asked. Because if they don't have an answer, they're not going to just do it off like on the fly. So it's like you're getting these questions that the media knows they can get a headline out of. But it's like and then on the other side, it's like that's already been scripted in a way before they even ask the question of what that answer is going to be. Those They know that that's going to end up as a headline. So they're going to structure their answer in a way that's only going to benefit them. You know, it's like it's all so scripted convoluted <laughs> yeah and it's just, yeah and doesn't really get anywhere <laughs> and sometimes like in that situation the the people we were like asking the questions to were not fluent in english and so mm -hmm. the translators would in many cases hear our question and then translate it to them and then like slightly change the question <laughs> to something way simpler mm. and then we would get the answer back and it was like yeah you kind you you answered the question that like the translator gave you that wasn't the in-depth question that we asked and i mm -hmm. wasn't sure if they were like translating it in a way because they they wanted to get that scripted answer like oh let me simplify this question a little bit because i we, you we don't know what speak the... Japanese. You don't know the way in which they were translating it. No, she she would repeat the question in English in a simpler form. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's well, weird. That's interesting. No, that's, but that's exactly what they're going to do in order. Because, yeah, because they can't. 
and there so, was two it, there was two translators and sometimes they would go back and forth mm-hmm. so it, it'd be like uh, this is just an example this question wasn't asked but it would be like um like how many pokemon cards did you sell in 2022 again this question was not this is just so i would ask like how many pokemon cards did you sell in 2022 and then the they would like talk about how they were going to translate it and then the, they would say like uh do we sell a lot of cards in 2022 and then they would ask that and then the answer would be like yes we sold a lot of cards but that wasn't the question i asked mm-hmm. but that's exactly but, like that think about that don't take the translation out of it completely right um apple for instance they no longer report how many uh like iphones they sell in a quarter right so if someone asked apple how many iphones did you sell last quarter apple's going to come back and say we sold a lot of iphones last quarter <laughs> they're not going to say we you know how many did we sell and so i'm sure those translators also know what information is actually going to be given to the media and things like that and so if the question were i know like it's an example but if the question were how many did you sell in 2022 how many pokemon cards did you sell and they know oh we're not going to reveal that information but we can tell you that we sold a lot of pokemon cards in 2022 they're going to ask it that way anyway because that's going to be the answer that's going to come back so i just feel like the the other thing because the the pushback from hannah is really good because then i have to think about like how it was like worded (laughs) The there were two questions and I can't exactly remember what they were. I think one was money related of like, mm-hmm. oh, did you make a lot of money? And when those questions were asked, you could see the person that only spoke Japanese, like the the person that was supposed to answer the question, like waiting for the question. And then the two translators would be like, they would be the ones that say, oh, we're not answering that. Can mm-hmm. you give us a different question? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like they, they like, they didn't even entertain the fact that like, we're going to pass this question on to the, like yeah. the head honcho. They were the ones that were like, they definitely knew like, oh, he, he can't answer that. And we're mm-hmm. not going to even like give him a simplified version of this question that you just asked. A yeah. lot of media training and a lot more control than I would have expected, but I guess that works. That's, I- I'm still shocked. They were like, do you want to visit creatures offices? <laughs> <'Cause I feel> like. <laughs> <laughs> that is like so guarded mm-hmm. like even even i don't even i i, I kind of feel like they like put bags over our head and was like this is like i don't even know how i got in that place like <laughs> i couldn't didn't you film it like there were stairs there was a vending machine i saw you that could, video. you could you could only film on certain floors okay but like the there is no signage outside the building to say it's creatures it's in like a shared business building with other buildings Mm -hmm. so unless i don't know if you maybe you could just go google map and type in creatures and be like oh there it is but even if you got there you'd have like no way to know if you were actually there or not But I feel like they like made you also leave out of a different door than you came in, so you're even more confused as to <laughs> you where had to you, leave with a ticket you... you came in. You know how like you scan like a ticket to like get onto a train and the the doors open, mm-hmm. like you couldn't get out without scanning the same ticket you got into. Oh wow! Yeah, I've that, been in yeah. a building that was like that. That's... Like they wanted to make sure like you were gone. Like <laughs> they were very like, do not lose this ticket because you need it to leave. Like they mm-hmm. need to know that you are out of this building. <laughs> I wonder what would have happened if you lost the ticket. You now work for know. creatures. You cannot leave the building. <laughs> huh. Um. All right. Well, that's today's episode. Uh, we'll be back next week. We'll give you the the update on Ryko. Um. I'm I'm gonna go out of limb and say we're probably not getting anything ZA related anytime soon. <laughs> I feel like the closest would maybe be worlds. We would get that. Maybe a little bit. Speaking worlds. of worlds, we don't have dates for worlds yet. Okay. I feel like we would get something in like June, possibly. Worlds um, is presumably in August. Yeah. But I feel like we would get something in like the beginning of summer from pokemon i don't know like i don't know i i don't think this game is like 
January, February, March. Oh, jeez. This conversation. <laughs> I, I do think this game is Q1 of 2025, but that is uh, yeah. th- just because of how they did the last Legends game. Yeah, we no have other, no we have no, no other, other information. Reason. Yeah, no just other a potential pattern. But even when they announced the one legends, the one legends, the other legends, <laughs> <laughs> they they did have a date with it right away. They, they did, did say mm-hmm. January. They did say early twenty twenty two, two <laughs> whatever year that was. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they did because they had the yeah because they had the date for. Pearl and Diamond Trading Pearl as well, yeah. right? So they they were telling they said both. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, maybe not. All right. Well, you know. we'll be back next week. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, feel free to comment your favorite legal action. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> please do, please do. I want to read those comments. <laughs> please comment your favorite legal case. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon or not Pokemon related, we would love to read those. Uh, uh, thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Bobby. We will see you all next week. This has been another episode of the Pokemon Podcast, and we are super effective. S- super. Uh, I think I'm changing over to my electric team and Pokemon Sleep tonight. What about you two? Effective. Yeah, tonight. Yeah, I don't effective. have an electric team. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you will. Yeah, you Just not yet. <laughs>